Hey, this is Tom, and in this video, we'll take a look at how you can monitor subtle cycling performance improvements and assess fatigue state on a regular basis using the Lamberts and Lamberts Submaximal Cycling Test, or LSCT. The LSCT is a short, structured test protocol that can help coaches and athletes to make more informed decisions on whether an upcoming session or string of sessions are load appropriate in the context of acute and chronic fatigue, when an athlete is ready to return to inducing a training stress after a recovery focus period, e.g. after several easy days within a microcycle where recovery and adaptation is the key objective, and to what extent performance may be improved as a result of the training program. An important skill of a coach or a self-coached athlete is adeptly monitoring fatigue state and ensuring that the shorter term training dose is appropriate in that context. So let's first take a look at the anatomy of the LSCT and how to perform the protocol before discussing how data from the test can be interpreted and practically applied to appropriately adapt the training program. Towards the end of the video, we'll then cover some tips and suggestions for better testing. The LSCT is typically a 16 to 17 minute long test, which can be used as a warm up for higher intensity sessions or races and as a standalone session where training stress is intended to be kept fairly low, i.e. in a recovery-focused microcycle. As mentioned before, the test is designed to predict performance improvements as well as to assess fatigue state, and is helpful when specifically looking for signals of potential non-functional overreaching or overtraining, where traditionally questionnaires like the Profile of Mood State or POMS and the daily analysis of life demands for athletes or DALDA questionnaires have been and still are used to ascertain fatigue levels in place of an actual measured performance test. Now let's take a look at how to actually perform the LSCT. The LSCT requires cyclists to ride at intensities which elicit certain percentages of their maximum heart rate. During the test, power output, heart rate, cadence, and RPE are recorded. It's also worth noting that pre-test dietary patterns, in particular the consumption of caffeine, which can increase heart rate, should be controlled, where it's advised that no caffeine should be consumed around three hours before the test. Now the test itself is split into four distinct stages. Stage one is performed at an intensity that elicits 60% of max heart rate, and that's done for six minutes. Stage two is ridden at an intensity that elicits 80% of max heart rate, and that's for another six minutes. Stage three is ridden at an intensity that elicits 90% of max heart rate, that's done for three minutes. And then stage four, you stop pedaling after the three minute effort at 90%, sit up and allow the heart rate to drop where heart rate recovery or HRR is measured. In the first three stages, the performance data is taken from one minute into each stage. So essentially the initial 60 seconds is set aside since this is where the power output is higher than would typically be associated with the target heart rate. And that's in order to raise the heart rate to the desired levels quickly. RPE is recorded for the final minute of stages one, two, and three. The resulting test file will look something like this where an initial effort of a higher power output is applied to speed up the heart rate increase in the first minute of each stage, before power output is then reduced to a level sufficient to maintain heart rate as close to the target percentage of max as possible. We'll now talk about interpreting the results of an LSCT. In order to practically apply the results from an LSCT, it's important to understand A, what measures should be considered, and B, what these might indicate. So in the first scenario, which might be an improved predicted performance or training state, you're likely to see a higher average power output in stages two and three, a quicker heart rate recovery, and similar RPE scores to previous tests. In the case of decreased predicted performance or training status, you're likely to see a lower average power output in stages two and three, a slower heart rate recovery, and similar RPE scores again to previous tests. Another scenario might present indications of acute fatigue where you might see higher power outputs in stage three, quicker heart rate recovery, increased RPE scores, and potentially an inability to reach 90% of max heart rate in that initial 60 seconds in stage three. 
and indications of more chronic fatigue might manifest in lower average power outputs in stage two and three, slower heart rate recovery, and higher RPE scores in stages two and three. What's really important to acknowledge here is that no one measure should be interpreted in isolation. Rather, it's the consideration of all of the measures and their interaction that should inform the interpretations and interventional decisions made by the coach or the athlete. Since the test relies on mediating intensity to maintain specific heart rate values, making subtle adjustments in intensity in real time can be challenging for some cyclists, especially those new to this kind of protocol. And based on this, it might take a few familiarizations to develop this skill to a level which produces accurate results. But it is really important in helping to detect these small but meaningful performance improvements. From what can be seen in the original studies, in our own experience with athletes and anecdotal experience from other coaches using the LSCT suggests that the test does not disrupt usual training practices or compromise recovery when used around once per microcycle, whether that's a seven day week or maybe a 10 day period. And then again, try to minimize pretest variables to the extent that you can to reduce influencing factors that might reduce the accuracy of test to test comparisons. So in summary, we can see that this relatively short 16 to 17 minute test packs in a lot of elements that can be used to assess the cyclist's performance development and fatigue status. It's worth mentioning that measures like heart rate and rating of perceived exertion, which are sometimes seen as rudimentary and simplistic tools in light of more advanced technology, remain important metrics to monitor and assess. It's also important to note that when overreaching or fatigue is indicated, that the test can't always tell us where that's coming from. It's important that coaches and athletes regularly assess whether the training dose is too high or too low, and to what extent external training factors such as sleep quality, relationship stress and work commitments are having on the ability to train and perform optimally. So I hope that video is useful and please leave any comments and questions below the video and check the description for relevant references and resources links. Otherwise, thanks a lot for your time and I'll catch you on another video soon.